we just saw an opportunity and a problem that needed solving. We invested in technology. We, um, you know, taught um, ourselves very quickly, like how to get good at marketing. For a brand that comes to Silk Fred now, you know, they, they almost have like a ready-made business. Like if they have a product that's really good and really interesting, then they can they can plug into our ecosystem with um, a ready-made customer base that's looking for products just like the ones that they sell. Uh, we have all the marketing, we have all the technology, and and the brand can really grow at the pace that that they're that they're comfortable with. Um, and it's been great to see some of them like really really take off. The challenges don't really get bigger or harder the more that you grow. They're just they are all just difficult no matter how small or how big you are, but they're just different. Um, so it could be you know, a recent one, like how to how to like navigate Brexit smoothly. We're in the middle of a pandemic and people don't really buy clothes when they can't leave their houses. So like, how do we navigate that? How do we adapt the culture of a, um, a very closely connected team to working remotely? And when you're first starting, like how do you keep the lights on? How do you find the right customers? I think when you have your have your own business and that is one of the most, I guess the most stressful, but also most enjoyable elements of it is that it is very, very varied and the challenges are always quite complex and different every time. You know, as we've been growing, we've gotten to a stage in our journey where we're very much like in the adolescent stage. So, you know, we're kind of growing up, but we're not quite grown up yet. And I think, you know, one of the biggest challenges with coming into like our adolescent stage, as it were, is, you know, how do you, how do you keep that culture that was so um, special in the beginning when, you know, it was smaller and everyone was really, really close to growing up into something that feels a little bit more formal. Um, you know, that's definitely been like one of the one of the more recent challenges, um, as well as everything that's happened like in the last in the, in the last twelve months. You just have to adapt, adapt and stay alive. Really, um, it's that kind of resilience. I think you look at successful businesses, and sometimes the fact that they just managed to keep going when others didn't was what got them to where they were. So I don't, I don't, I don't underestimate or undervalue that at all. The first piece of advice would be to not underestimate how important resilience is as a factor um, in starting a business and, and growing it successfully. Like there were so many moments along the journey where things were, you know, were just incredibly difficult, but that staying power, um, if you're prepared to push through those moments where most people would walk away, you probably will get quite far. And the other one would be to you know, surround yourself with mentors, like having people you can pick the phone up, pick up the phone to when people who've been through similar things, um, you know, it is, re is really helpful. Like it can be quite an isolating experience to start a business Like you don't, especially in the beginning, you don't have like a big team of people around you to bounce ideas off. You're explaining to your family and your friends, like what you do, like they'll often be like, oh, okay, like a bit skeptical until like it actually starts getting somewhere. So that requires like, you know, like a lot of like motivation. So like have, just be, being able to talk to other people who've been in the same situation and I think going through the same challenges is, is really, really, really helpful. And I've always found as well, if you reach out to people, like they're generally like willing to help as well.